Hello everybody, this is Boaz Fad and I'm here with a weekly astrology message, evolutionary astrology message for the week between January 14th and 21st. So, I'm sitting here on the banks of the river, hearing, hearing the water go by. It's a beautiful morning. Cranes jumping in the water, taking some fish in their mouth. All kinds of birds and the sunshine coming out. But we are here to talk about the stars, aren't we? So, first things first. Mercury moving back into Capricorn. Mercury, the planet of logic, the planet of information, the planet of navigation, the planet with is, which is in charge over our mental capacities is moving back into Capricorn. Serious, reliable, responsible Capricorn. This is a feeling, a much more grown up, reliable and, respect and uh, responsible feeling that we need to take things forward. Oh, I see there's a tractor coming by. But he'll not be, he'll be passing. Hello, good morning. Nice. So, Mercury moving into Capricorn makes us all much more serious and adult about everything that we are navigating through our life. What we're thinking, our thought process, our, 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 our ideas become much more adult. We need to be careful that they won't become too somber and too serious. But there's a feeling like we need to take things forward, that we don't have any more time to meddle and stay in the station. It's like, you remember when the old locomotives started going out of the station, they was, the wheels would actually go spinning even even faster before it would actually start moving this is the kind of feeling we have as mercury is starting to move faster and faster forward we're we're taking ourselves forward and it's not an easy week it's not an easy week because two days from now the conjunction between chiron the wounded healer and Mars, the planet of war and energy and initiative and everything male within every each and every one of us and all our lower chakras, planet of action, they are conjunct in the sky. Not only they are conjunct in the sky, they are conjunct in the sky opposing the moon, fueling that conjunction with more emotionality. And what does that conjunction mean? <clears throat> It means that we could be very much aware and very much in touch with our own inner pain. With the places that need to change. With the places that can no longer go on running in circles within us, creating a perpetual circle of pain and anxiety and frustration and anger. So on the very positive side, this could be a time in which we understand that we need to take affirmative action to take ourselves out of that spinning wheel. To actually be brave enough and tend to the places which are hurt in our life and thus introduce a spiritual dimension, a therapeutic dimension into our own actions this week, into our own desires, into our own doings, into our own male parts, actually give birth to something which is much more authentic, much more in tune with who we are and what we need emotionally. Something that utilizes assets that either we've known we've had and forgot about, or never known we did, talents that we have hidden within us and give birth to those talents, to those therapeutic qualities that are good not only for us, but for people in our environment as well, into our daily life, into our action. This is in the very positive side. 
on the not so positive side because it's very easy for our mental side to understand all of this something else when we're talking about our emotional physical body which moves a lot slower so on the not so positive side we could be in touch with a lot of pain and anger and frustration this week we could feel <clears throat> like we're touching all these sore spots again and that can create a lot of out an outburst of anger and frustration and even violence and we could see people losing it this week or being in a lot of in a very hurtful place in a very angry place and either hurting themselves god forbid or hurting other people god forbid and there's something about tending to those less fortunate souls tending to people who are hurt tending to people who are in pain tending to people who are experiencing those disabilities this week and actually creating or being a, 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 a creative and a positive force for those less fortunate people, for people who are not as strong. So the 16th is a very turbulent day emotionally. Don't be surprised if you're a little down. On the 19th, the sun moves into Aquarius. Happy birthday, all you Aquarians! When the sun moves into Aquarius, this is not about identifying our group, connecting with our clan. No, this is about shining within our clan. This is about giving our light to the group. This is about fulfilling our role within society. Aquarius is very much a humanitarian sign. It's all about groups and our part within the group. And when the sun, our realization, what we create, the light that emerges from everything that we do and imprints itself on our surroundings, our identity, when they are together, these two archetypes, it is time for us to act and to act fast. Uranus and, 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 and Aquarius is all about the quickening. So our creative side would be much more cerebral. It's all about our higher, our, our higher mind because Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury. And our creative side would be quickened. We could do much more. We could act in a faster pace this week. and how within the group we could actually do things that have a bigger effect than our own ego, our own status, our own income. This is about harnessing our own light to something that is bigger than us, to something that works for the betterment of men, betterment of society, betterment of the group, betterment of this world this is about affirmative action and 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 of course Uranus and Aquarius are all about change understanding that change needs to happen understanding that the old ways are no longer relevant so we all can become much more rebellious this week much less patient with the structures of the old system. And again, asking, demanding, change now. Uranus doesn't have a lot of patience. And we have to be careful not to be too unpatient ourselves and utilize our higher mind so we don't throw away the baby with the bathwater. And of course, everything creative within us can be influenced in a way that helps us see, see things outside the box in a very innovative, new manner, in a very futuristic manner. We just have to make sure that it is all connected to the here and now, to reality, and not to separated 
from everything that is occurring because this is all about creating solutions for what we are experiencing and moving forward. On January 23rd, the day after next week, <coughs> there's a conjunction between Venus and Chiron that I want to talk about because we can feel it from the end of this week. And it's going to happen on 22 degrees Pisces. Why is that important? It's important because in March, in, March, in, in April, Venus is going to go through a retrograde movement. And at the end of that movement, it's going to conjunct Chiron again on these degrees. So things that start now, for better or worse, can go on and we can touch base with them again in March and in March and April. So I want you to check your own natal charts and see if you have anything, any stars, any planets around 22 degrees Pisces opposing it or squaring it because then you will know that you will be more affected by this conjunction. And what is this conjunction? Venus Oh, hello geese, back Two geese, nice. But I won't move the camera to, to film them now, but they're beautiful. Good morning geese. Back. Sorry, anyway. <laughs> anyway. So Venus, the planet of love and relationship and satisfaction and income, conjunct Chiron, the wounded healer. So let's start with the positive. On the positive side, we can introduce into our work something that is much more spiritual, something that is much more authentic to us, that is much more in tune with our own beliefs and who we are, and takes from within us, from the deep well that we call ourselves. Oh, bye-bye, geese. You know, when I'm sorry I'm stopping with astrology, but what my mom always told me that the first thing that pilots saw when they were able to go to the stratosphere or, or very high up at least, you know, and fly with a jet engine higher than anybody had before was a school of geese <laughs> flying there with their feathers, you know, in, in, the, in the breeze. Geese, geese are wonderful animals. Anyway, and they're very smart. So back to astrology. So, either we can introduce something that is much more authentic, it takes from the infinite well that we call ourselves talents that we've either forgotten that we had and rediscover or discover for the first time and introduce them into our work, into our relationship. And when I talk, when I talk about relationships, I talk about relationships, whether they are work-related, whether there's, these are friends or whether these are love relationships and actually provide higher satisfaction and healing into, our, into the places that Venus, that Venus rules, either our relationships or our work, our income. That's in the very positive side. But as I said, we're not always on the higher side. If we talk about the less positive side, this is a place that within relationships or regarding our income or our work, we could be in a lot of pain. We could be very sensitive. We could be in a place that actually feels those nerves endings, nerve endings flutter in the wind and everything is hypersensitive, hypersensitive. So we need to make sure that we are extra caring, extra nurturing, both towards ourselves and towards people around us, whether it is in work-related areas or interpersonal ones this week, and actually put a lot of effort in bridging the gaps and healing and tending and nurturing and not acting out from that painful place again because these same degrees 
Venus is going to come back to these same degrees in April and things that start now subjects and issues that appear now can come back and haunt us <coughs> I'm sorry or work in our favor so times with black moons this week on the 17th from 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time I'm reminding you moon that is void of course is not a good time to start new endeavors other than that it's okay <coughs> I'm sorry it's just that the energy is much more minute and and it's a it's a tr tranquil energy almost energy less on the 19th around 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a very short time around half an hour and then on the 20 first from around 8 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time until 6 a.m. of the 22nd Eastern Standard Time so that's everything for this week about next week I'm going to travel to the USA I'm going to the Kepler conference in Cape Canaveral Florida this is the first conference ever to bring astrologers from world over from the world over that deal with empirical research in the astrological field and it's going to be very exciting to be there and to learn about all these um, all that empirical data and of course I'm going to be sending you videos from Florida and then I'm going to see clients in New York City and I'm going to send you videos from New York City as well and then I'm going to see clients in Kansas and I'm going to lecture in Kansas as well and I'm gonna send you videos from there as well and of course you're more than welcome to be in touch whether it is for lectures or classes or private consultations via webinar format or Skype or questions you have about evolutionary astrology stay in touch and thank you for listening have a beautiful week this is Boaz Feiler goodbye